All right, so let's dive into the world of geometric sequences and geometric series. And let's start off with an example, because I think examples are the best way to explain things. So let's start off with a really simple and boring example. Suppose that I have a series or a sequence of numbers. Let's say that we have 2, 6, 18, 54, 162, 486, and so on. And what this ellipsis means is that there's a pattern of numbers that can continue ad infinitum after 486. So in that sense, recognizing a geometric sequence or a geometric progression is a great exercise in pattern recognition. So can you recognize a pattern between these numbers? Well, you might start off by saying, well, the difference between 2 and 6 is 4. But what about the next two? The difference between 18 and 6 is 12. And the difference between 18 and 54 is 36. Okay, so the difference between the numbers is always changing. And there is also a pattern in these series of numbers. But what you'll find is that the common factor between these numbers is also the same common factor between all of these numbers. So instead of looking at the difference, let's look at the ratio between the numbers. So to get from 2 to 6, I need to multiply by 3. To get from 6 to 18, I also need to multiply by 3. And similarly with 18 to 54, and also 54 to 162, and so on. So in this case, we start with the number 2. The next number is 2 times 3, which equals 6. The next number is 6 times 3, which equals 18. But I'm going to write 6 times 3 as 2 times 3. So just bringing down this term to the next line. For the next number, let's bring down the entire expression from the, from the left-hand side of the above. So it's 2 times 3 times 3, which is 18, times 3, again, is 54. And to get the next number, which is 168, it's 2 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is 54, times 3, again, is equal to 162. So the 3 here, which we get from dividing the next number in the sequence, by the previous number in the sequence is what we call the common ratio. And it's often denoted by the letter R, and in this case it's equal to 3. So if we take any number in the sequence and divide it by the previous number, so we have 162, which is the fifth number in the sequence, divided by 54, which is the fourth number in the sequence. Let's call the fifth term T5. So 162 is equal to T5 divided by the fourth term which we call T4 or term 4. We should always get the number 3 which is the common ratio. So generally if we divide the next term t of n plus 1 by the current term, the nth term, we should always get the common ratio. For our sequence here, we started with the number 2, and to get the next term, we multiply it by the common ratio. So to get the second term, we, we multiply by the common ratio once. To get the third term, we multiply by the common ratio twice. To get the fourth term, it is 3 times and so forth. So the number 2 here is the starting number which we call the scale factor. So the starting number which equals 2 will label as A and it's also known as the scale factor. What this means then is to get any term of the sequence, so the nth term Tn, all I need to know is a scale factor multiplied by the common ratio, and I need to raise a common ratio to the power of n minus 1. 
Okay, now I know my board is getting a bit cluttered, but let's persist a little bit. So in this case, we have uh, the second term, which is T2. The scale factor is A, which is 2, by the common ratio R. And if we follow the formula, which is N minus 1, we have 2 minus 1, which equals A to the power of 1, sorry, AR to the power of 1, which equals AR. For the third term, T3, we start with A, multiplied by the common ratio, raise it to the third power, minus 1, so we get AR squared, which in this case is equal to 2 times 3 squared. And you should be able to follow the same pattern with the preceding terms. Okay, so far we have established these properties. We have the scale factor, we have the common ratio, which can also be expressed as the ratio between successive terms, and we have the formula for finding the nth term. Okay, let's have a look now at a more interesting example. The sequence starting with 3, negative 6, positive 12, negative 24, positive 48, negative 96, and so on and so forth, is this a geometric progression? Because we have here alternating positives and negatives. Well, let's have a look at the ratio between the numbers. So between 3 and negative 6, I needed to multiply by negative 2. To get from 6 to 12, negative 6 to 12, I needed to multiply by negative 2. So we have a negative number multiplied by a negative number, which turns it into a positive number. Similarly, between 12 and negative 24, it's negative 2, negative 2, and so on. So in this instance, we have a common ratio of negative 2. We start with the number 3, so the scale factor is 3. Let's find the fifth term, which is 48. So T5 equals a to the a by r to the 5 minus 1, which equals a by r to the 4th, which in our case is 3 times negative 2 to the 4th power, which equals 3 times 16, which indeed equals 48. Okay, so the point to note with this example is that the common ratio can be a negative number. It doesn't just have to be a positive number. Okay, let me list the first sequence again. So we had 2, 6, 18, 54, 162, 486, and so on and so forth. The common ratio here was 3. So now I want to make the note that if we take the absolute value of the terms as the sequence go on, what do you notice? These numbers get larger and larger and larger. So in other words, these terms will approach infinity, the magnitude of these terms will approach infinity as the sequence progresses towards infinity, or the number of terms progresses towards infinity. But is this always the case? So with the next example, I'll show you that it's not, and it's all to do with how big this common ratio is. Let's take a look at the example starting with 1000, comma, 100, comma, 10, comma, 1, comma, 0 0.1, 0 0.001, and so on and so forth. So is this a geometric progression? Well, the ratio between 1,000 and 100 is 1 tenth. From 100 to 10 is also 1 tenth. I'm going to write it below here because we're running out of room. From 10 to 1 is 1 tenth. 1 tenth, 1 tenth. So the common ratio for this progression is 1 tenth, or equal to 0 0.1. But what about the magnitude of these numbers? Are they getting larger or are they getting smaller? If we keep going, we can see that the numbers will approach 0 as we progress towards an infinite number of terms. And that's all to do with this common ratio, this R value, being less than 1, but greater than 0. Let's look at the sequence 1000, negative 100, 
10, negative 1, 0 0.1, negative 0 0.001, negative 0 0.01. I'm sorry, this number here should actually be negative 0 0.1, not, sorry, positive 0 0.1, not, neg not uh, positive 0 0.001. The next number in the sequence, of course, will be 0 0.001. So we have an alternating positive-negative sequence of numbers with the common ratio being r equals negative one-tenth or negative 0 0.1. So what you can see here is the magnitude of the numbers still progressing to zero as the number of terms goes on. So in this case, the common ratio R is has to be greater than negative one, but less than zero. And we can summarize this by saying, if the absolute value of the common ratio is less than one, or R is between, negative 1 and 1, we'll always progress towards 0, and we call these sequences convergent. So the sequence is convergent if r is between negative 1 and 1. On the other hand, a sequence is divergent if the magnitude of r, the absolute value of r, is greater than 1, which means r is less than negative 1, or r is greater than positive 1. We can also call this exponential growth. And we can call this exponential decay. OK, before we wrap up, what about the sequence 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7? Is this a geometric sequence? Well, I can argue yes, because the common ratio between the numbers is 1. So r equals 1, a equals 7. And when r equals 1, we call this a constant sequence. But what about 7, negative 7, 7, negative 7, 7, negative 7, and so forth? And clearly, the ratio, the common ratio between these numbers is, between the sevens is negative one, with a being equal to seven. So we call this an alternating sequence when r is equal to negative one. All right, let's wrap things up. So what have we established? We've established that a geometric sequence can be described by the formula t, the nth term, can be found through the product of the scale factor by the common ratio to the power of n minus 1. So this is the formula that describes any geometric sequence. The common ratio can be found by dividing successive terms. So the nth plus 1 term divided by the nth term will always give the common ratio r. If r is a positive number, so if r is greater than 0, which means it's a positive number, the terms will have the same sign as the starting term. So all terms will have the same sign as the starting term a. So if r is less than zero, which means it's a negative number, all terms will have, will alternate between positive and negative. So if the starting term is a negative number, the second term will be a positive number, the third term will be a negative number, and so forth. If the starting term is a positive number, the second term, or the even terms, will be negative. If the magnitude of the common ratio is greater than 1, the sequence will be divergent, or will have exponential growth. Six, if the magnitude of the common ratio is less than one, the sequence will have exponential decay or be convergent. Property number seven, if r is equal to positive one, 
uh, we'll have a constant sequence if the R if the common ratio is equal to negative 1 we will have an alternating sequence and finally one final rule that I haven't covered is that the common ratio for a geometric sequence generally should not be equal to zero because this will invalidate property number two as we cannot divide by zero. That will do it for this video. I'm um, sorry about the orange. I should have chosen a better color now that I think of it. But uh, in the next video, we'll look at an application of geometric sequences. So stay tuned for that. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like and please subscribe. Please share it with your study mates. I look forward to helping you more with your math studies. Until next time, best of luck and I'll see you on the next video.